हे गाइस वेलकम बैक टू फूड टेक जर्नी टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग केमिकल एंड बायोकेमिकल चेंजेस इन फूड दैट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट इन फूड केमिस्ट्री हैव यू एवर वंडर वाई ब्रेड टर्न्स गोल्डन ब्राउन वाई मिल्क गर्डल्स और वाई ऑयल्स गो रेंसिड दीज आर ऑल द केमिकल एंड बायोकेमिकल चेंजेस इन फूड Today we will explore the fascinating science behind these food transformation. Without without further wasting time, let's start. What is food processing? It is a process in which ingredients are altered to improve shelf life, taste and safety. But why are we studying these changes? Like what is the need? It is essential for controlling food quality, texture, flavor and nutrition. We as a food technologist should study these changes in order to improve the shelf life flavor texture and nutrient value of the food products starting with chemical changes in carbohydrates as we know carbohydrates undergo various changes during cooking and storage so let's start with gelatinization this happens when starch absorbs water and swells under heat making rice pasta and it also makes sauces thick and soft as you can see in this diagram that starch is swelling when heated in water next is browning reaction we all know carbohydrate goes through various browning reactions first is caramelization it happens when sugars break down under heat creating that golden brown crust another important browning reaction is the maillard reaction which occurs between amino acids and sugars giving bread and roasted meat their rich flavor i hope from diagram it is clear to you that what is the difference between caramelization and maillard reaction here the sugars are turning uh, it is uh, mainly used for bakery uh, products another browning in carbohydrates is enzyme enzymatic browning it is caused by polyphenol oxidase um it turns brown uh, in apples potatoes you must have seen in apples potatoes bananas that when they are exposed to air the polyphenol oxidase which is present causes browning it can be controlled by acids or blanching processes now we will discuss chemical changes in proteins like carbohydrates proteins also undergo amazing transformation you already know about enzymatic browning in fruits but did you know it happens in proteins too this is why shrimp turns pink when cooked like heat inactivates enzymes that keep their color pale first is enzymatic browning uh, like as you can see in the diagram that this is normal protein but uh, denaturation is done when uh, it acts with uh, heat when heat acts on the normal protein the de- the protein gets denaturated the example is egg that you have uh, seen in your daily routine or you can try it with these paper pens as well next is coagulation when heat causes proteins to unfold and form solid structures um like when egg whites go from clear to firm or as you can see over here that uh, proteins are irreversible ir, uh, reversibly clump for example cooked meat here the alpha helical proteins are in the solution when it is heated it turns into denatured proteins when it is heated again and again at high temperatures it turns into coagulated proteins which cannot be transformed back 
Next is cross linking. Cross linking is another important protein reaction. It helps gluten form in bread dough, giving it elasticity and chewiness. It is a basic example for cross linking. It strengthens the dough structure. It is also uh, used in bakery industry where the protein protein uh, interaction and the the cross link proteins are formed using the cross linkers the cross linker the best example is gluten now we will study about some chemical changes in fats and oils in fats and oils lipid oxidation hydrogenation intrastratification these are the changes that takes place we all know fats and oils add flavor and texture to our food but they can also change chemically first lipid oxidation it causes rancidity affects flavor the hydrolytic uh, rancidity is where enzyme activity releases free fatty acids and the oxidative rancidity is where free radicals oxidizes fat especially frying oils next is hydrogenation it is a process that converts liquid oils into solid fats like turning vegetable oil into margarine but be careful this process can create trans fats which aren't great for health next is intrastratification it alters fat structure improving functionality in products it uh, modifies the fat molecules to improve the texture and stability it is often used in baking next is changes in vitamins during processing top fruits that are high in vitamin c are blackberries orange strawberries papaya kiwi and lemon but do you know that these are had some of them are heat sensitive vitamins like c and b vitamins degrades with heat we know vitamins are essential nutrients but uh, they can also break down like for vitamin c light can also destroy vitamins like riboflavin and vitamin a degrade with light these are the products that are rich in vitamin a like carrot broccoli melon papaya beef milk butter you must have also seen that uh, milk is uh, packed into opaque cartons uh, as these are these are having light sensitive vitamins next is oxidation it is another culprit exposure to air can degrade vitamins in cut fruits and vegetables reducing their nutritional values now what are the changes in pigments and color compounds food colors come from natural pigments but these can also change due to heat ph and oxygen let's start with chlorophyll it makes green vegetables vibrant but too much heat can turn it into pale color try cooking broccoli at home and you will understand what i am trying to explain you next is carotenoids it is stable but it is slightly degraded with heat for example carrots if uh, car try cooking carrots at home if you are going to cook the red carrot it will uh, turn into orangish color because the color is stable but the slight degradation is there in carrots next is anthocyanins while processing uh, this product um if we are going to use the red and purple foods like uh, blueberry and red cabbage uh, in acid they will stay red but in basic condition in alkaline conditions they will turn blue or green there are few enzymatic and microbial reactions uh just read read these two words enzyme in activation and fermentation we all know in fermentation microbial activity enhances flavor shelf life like in yogurt and cheese fermentation in fermentation what is basically happening the microorganisms are eating the product and they are enhancing the flavor of the product but in enzyme inactivation 
we are doing blanching blanching at high temperature we are providing heat to the product to stop browning and spoilage enzymes can you see how different uh, these are from eat each other this is a difference preservation techniques and impacts we all know thermal processing is done in small and large scale industries in which we are killing pathogens but it may also cause nutrient or color loss freezing is where we are stopping microbial growth but it may affect texture drying it also extend shelf life but it can also cause browning and nutrient loss irradiation it kills microbes and their minor sensory changes but these rays can be harmful if the dose is high in conclusion see what we are trying to do is our main aim is to retain quality safety and nutrients we all know this food chemistry is all around us from browning reactions to vitamin loss but we have to understand these factors our main uh, significant role as food technologist is to understand these changes uh to optimize processing and product quality thank you very much if you have any doubt you can ask in youtube comment section or on our instagram handle if you have any query you can mail us on foodtechjourney@gmail.com keep spreading the content guys and help us in growing and reach the ones in need if you like the video please hit the like button and comment us if you want to learn about any other topic you can let us know in the comment section we will definitely try to fulfill your needs thank you once again have a good day